world, and welcome to CNET's live coverage of the Consumer Electronics Show, CES 2016. It's the biggest tech show of the year, and we're coming to you live from the CNET stage at the South Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center. I'm Bridget Carey, joined by Jeff Bacalar, and we kick things off every day this week with our show, Inside Scoop. This is the second day of the CES show floor that it's open, and we spent the past few days covering the future tech coming in 2016, including uh, smart home appliances, concept car tech, televisions, of course, TVs, it's not CES, without a giant TV that no one really needs, and a few robots and drones, naturally. There's even a robot that you can ride, and we'll get to a live demo of that in just a few minutes. But first, I want to talk about one of the bigger trends that we're seeing at the show, wearable tech. Now, for a few years now, we've seen companies want to strap all sorts of things to our bodies yes. at the show. But the health side of wearable tech just continues to grow and take new forms. And some of it makes sense, and other things can be a little strange. You know? just, just a little strange. Yeah. Well, so you and I were talking about this backstage before we came out here, and one of the first kind of companies that uh, was making a lot of headlines yesterday was mm -hmm. Fitbit and That's their right. new initiative to sort of take over maybe a more higher end smartwatch. Right, kind of getting closer to that Apple Watch side of things or that Pebble Watch side of things. Right. We're seeing video now uh, where the new model, the Blaze, has a color screen on it. Now this isn't doing everything that a smart smartwatch can do, but you are getting some notifications from your phone with right. texts and uh, calendar alerts, and you can switch it out with different bands. So a little more style. You know, Fitbit's popular, but you don't usually have a lot of options other than rubber. And I mean, if you go back and look at what that brand has done, a lot of their products have really focused on subtlety, whereas the Blaze sort of comes out and says, hey, this is a piece of fashion, you know, it's a, it's a fashionable accessory. Right. This is this is jewelry, this is something you want to show off. So definitely a change of pace for that uh, brand. But then, we got we to gotta talk about the elephant in the room with, uh, with Fitbit. Yeah. They're uh, at the mercy of a, a class action lawsuit dealing with uh, reporting inaccurate heartbeat uh, readings. Right, the same day that they came out with this new Blaze uh, watch tracker, it's the same day that they got a class action lawsuit over the fact that the claims are, it's not accurately tracking your heartbeat. In fact, some in the claim were saying, like, half of the heartbeats per minute were being counted. Which is, which is shocking. I mean, I don't think anybody ever accused a, you know, a fitness tracking, you know, uh, sort of biometric scanner device to replace a doctor or any kind of realistic medical advice. Right. But at the same time, it could be used as this complementary product. You need to be close. Definitely. I mean, none of, if, if you wear like five of them on your wrist at once, so you're going to get like slightly different things because right. none of it's perfect. It's it's like how you're going up and down is a step. Sure. But it, yeah, I it's, mean, it's definitely you know I think if if anything, uh, I think it will shed a lot more light on the category as as a whole and sort of say, hey, let's take a step back and maybe look at just how accurate or inaccurate these devices are reporting these pretty vital metrics and uh, kind of go from there. You know, so with Fitbit being one of the stars because everyone you know knows Fitbit, there are some other ways of tracking that aren't something you put on your wrist. Right. Um, like the Hexoskin Smart, it's a new biometric tracking shirt. Uh, it's the second generation, so this thing has been out, but now it's got Bluetooth Smart, so the battery life is better. And here's some of the stats. You can work out in this shirt. Not only is it tracking your heart rate, your breathing rate, your breathing volume. So if you're like a heavy breather. Like, so <laughs> it, it can tell you just like how much you know, a cubic volume of air you're sort of <laughs> breathing also, in. Insights on on your recovery, which I do not want to know. Like, I rather just know how well I did, not right. how pathetic I am after right. the run. Right. And there's also sleep quality, but I hope you don't like track your sleep after your run because that's just nasty. It just sounds that's like just I'm wearing nasty. this shirt for a very long time. <laughs> I hope uh, there's some sort of laundry in between well, that. Okay, so speaking of that, you can work out an hour a day for five days a week and not have to charge this shirt. So for nearly seven weeks. So the charging you don't have to do every day, just please, please wash. Be on the charge at least as much as, as, as other, you know, devices. I hope, I hope they're sort of doing some sort of antimicrobial, you yeah, know, cotton. 
right? You would hope. And then also, speaking of things you can wear, there is the Lumo Run Shorts. Okay. Now, the shorts themselves, the fabric isn't smart. It's what you put in your shorts to right, make them smarty pants. This is butt tech. This is, this is butt tech, it's butt guys. Tech. But it's butt tech. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Butt tech. <laughs> um, it, it is a, like, basically a, a device that you put in a pocket. Okay. And this thing is tracking not just how long you're running and how far you're running, and how, uh, but also... Uh, other kind of analysis, like your pelvic twisting. Right. Uh, so it's doing this all in real time and sending that data to a phone, which you're seeing on the screen here. This is the, the real time, uh, uh, you know, what your run is and how long you're running. But okay, that's a little different, you know, how you're how you're moving your pelvis. It's a step in an interesting direction. I think we're bombarded by all these pedometers and and you know products that kind of all do the same thing. It's nice to see something maybe thinking a little bit outside the box. But this next product, I'm very psyched about. I'm sure you are as well, because finally, there may be a light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to not looking like a damn fool when wearing some sort of smart glass technology. Oh, yes. And this is thanks to uh, Carl Zeiss, the glass maker, lens maker. They've uh, sort of been working on this prototype, this tech that will introduce uh, the ability to sort of see things in glass, in your glasses, without, like we said, looking goofy. You don't have this giant thing hanging off the right or left side of your face like right. you do with Google Glass. This is this is the idea that the frames look normal and they, they've they uh, worked on the lens so that when you do put computer technology right. inside, it'll just look like the screen's floating in front of you. Now if someone looks at you, it looks like you got like something they'll on your, see it. something's on your glasses. Sure, they'll be like, hey, wash that off. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at least you don't have like, you know, a giant camera like Definitely, no, and I think, and, and yes, they're not inventing the, the actual computing tech. They're sort of just saying, hey, here's this vessel. We, could, we figure out a way for it to be displayed without a overbearing sort of contraption. Right, so when, so when the, the glasses do become something that you know, is a little more common, they're, they're there to rescue us on the fashion right, side. Right, you weren't too, too hot on Google Glass, right? Yeah, I mean, you're like fun for the moment, but you're not really wearing this thing right. all the time, right? Exactly. Uh, uh, so here's something else mm -hmm. that may make you look a little crazy. Yeah, speaking of looking dorky, this goes <laughs> in the other direction. And this is from Samsung. Um, all right, we talk a lot about the fitness tracking stuff that you wear on your wrist. Right. On one end, they kind of went smart here. This is called Tip Talk, and it's a traditional strap that you add to, um, or it's a wa it's a strap you add to a, tr a traditional watch. I meant to say, and it'll do your fitness tracking, but. It takes phone calls. This is and cool. To, and to take phone calls. This is kind of, I can't tell if this is cool or not. To take phone calls. Yeah. You stick your finger in your ear. Right, and then. And go, happened? hello? Yeah. Kind of like some sort of get smart situation. Here's Seamus. Uh, actually, you can see a picture of him trying it out. He said in his review that he was in a really loud conference center, and it was a little muffled, but he could make out. And that's the cool thing. Like, they figure out a way to, uh, is it bone conduction? It's not bone conduction, but it is going through your organs. It's just and, like, finger the conduction. the vibrations are just traveling through your blood. So your finger, <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> so your finger is actually the earpiece. Right. Which is crazy. And I think that's just on, you know, by itself, that tech's kind of cool. I mean, it is something out of out of a TV show of the past, but it was something ridiculous. But, you know, maybe you've got to take a quick phone call. You sort of, hello? Hello? Yeah, I mean, and you, people people will still think you're crazy in the supermarket. Right. But. Well, you see all those like <laughs> Secret Service guys always going like, you know, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to make. You look thing. important. Yeah, I'd be like, come again. Well, you know. And it, and they say the target price is eighty dollars, so it's not so it's far not, out that you might want to try it and yeah. not feel so bad. It's um, not over the top. I think it's something we may want to look out for. Right. And Samsung has a few other things they've been working on. They have a whole division of some strange wearable tech. Yeah. Um. And and that got people's heads turning the other day. So. How about a belt? Yes. How about a smart belt? It's not just a belt. It's called a welt. So don't, I don't think you should call your belt a welt, <laughs> no, right? No. Okay. We don't, as long have, as we we don't have to go with a weird name, you know. So why is this a smart belt, though? What does it do? Well, um, it's tracking how many steps, like everything does, because I need to know how many steps I take all the time, right? And how long you've been sitting. Okay. And this is the part I don't really feel comfortable with. Well, sitting is the new smoking. Oh, yeah. Well, so they say. Yeah. And then they also tracks your eating and your waistline size. Sure. So if you ate a lot one day, this belt's gonna guilt you and say, if you keep eating like this, I won't fit you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, it's right. like, like you will gain two pounds in a month. Yeah. That's... I don't need my belt judging me. 
Uh, there's enough judgment in my life from other devices. <laughs> exactly. That's what, we're just entering an era of judgment tech. That's all yeah. it is. But uh, yeah, I, I guess it's something that uh, someone out there might find interesting. This is more of like a prototype situation. Uh, we'll have to see if there really is a demand. But there's one product I wanted to talk about before we have to hit the break. Uh, they have a, Samsung also has a smart business suit okay. that, with right. NFC technology. That's they gonna, already sell this in Korea for five hundred dollars, but they want to like expand, expand it. So you'll be able to share your contact information by kind of literally rubbing up against somebody. <laughs> well, like it has NFC in the sleeve, right? Right. NFC so, in the sleeve. So, so it would be like, hello, what's your Jeff. Number? Oh, that's what's your not number? creepy. We just <laughs> met. Like you're obviously just meeting someone if you're exchanging information. Let's rub wrists. Let's see how, like, just like that. There you go. Hey, see, there I feel go. violated, but that's fine. <laughs> there you have You'll it. You'll never forget that person, though. No, you that, won't. That's a rememberable business card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, there is tech for women, too. There's, yeah. there, there's a purse. Okay. That, you know, it doesn't, doesn't have that creepy factor with, you know, rubbing purses or something. But <laughs> it does have solar panels on the side. It's called the Soul Bag Purse. It doesn't, here's what I don't like about it, though. They kind of missed the perfect point. Aside from looking like a honeycomb on the front, right. um, it doesn't store the power. You only get the power in real time. It, it charges your phone when your phone's inside of the purse. So, so you're getting a charge if you're laying out in the park and you have direct sunlight. Other than that, you know, you're getting like itty bitty charges at a time. That's a very specific situation. Yeah, I need that to look a little, a little cuter. I don't need yeah. to, you know, like I don't. And Function over fashion, I guess. I, I guess if you're going to the beach, but, right. but you know, I have a feeling that it's not going to be too cheap, you well, know. Apparently, four hours, right? Four hours of charging. Yeah, it it it, it can get four hours of charging on a phone, but once again, you got to be outside, so right. you know, also put on that sunblock while sure. you're charging for four hours. <laughs> Interesting. All right, I, w I would like to check that out. I don't really. It would maybe get me to go out in the sun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that, that's not really our expertise. At no, CNET. it is not. 